Hello again, everybody. This is Dan Clauser, and welcome back to the Journey of My Mother's Son podcast. Today, I'm joined with Tammy Gowen, who is a happiness and self-love coach for highly sensitive people, or otherwise known as HSPs. Tammy, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. I'm really glad to be here. Absolutely. Looking forward to this conversation. Um, so first of all, uh, explain to my listeners, because I, I think it's a, a trait that is a little bit of a unknown and probably needs to be more awareness brought to it, which is why I wanted to have you on the show. Um, but explain a little bit as to what is an HSP or a highly sensitive person. You bet. So um, the technical term is sensory processing sensitivity, which is a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> so we usually say just highly sensitive um, or HSP, highly sensitive person. <clears throat> and HSPs are um, about actually 20% of the population, which is surprising to people, HSPs and, and non. Uh, it's a genetic trait. So it's not something that you know we just develop or we choose or anything like that. So something we're born with. And it's just a matter of the way we process information. So we process things much more deeply than non-highly sensitives. And there's actually differences in our brain um, physically and chemistry in terms of how we, how we, you know, process that information and how we react or respond to things. So um, it's, it's about that, that processing and Elaine Aaron, who coined the term back in the nineties, of her research <clears throat> kind of describes it as there's an acronym that it's really useful to be aware of to help you remember and it's does d-o-e-s so it has to do with a processing as i mentioned just everything is super important we're like you know sponges with not as big of filters or as effective of filters so we just everything pours in all the time and we want to process all that we want to you know take everything into account we see all sides that kind of thing so everything's really big and important and then O would be for overstimulation or overwhelm also, because that tends to lead to overwhelm when we're overstimulated. So whether it's environmental things, like usually it's challenging to be in a place with you know, a lot of sound and movement and, you know, maybe like bright lights and, you know, things like that can be really overwhelming and hard to pay attention or focus uh, when all of that's going on. Or sometimes it's our emotions get so intense that it's overwhelming. Uh, so that is a, a definite piece of it that we tend to react to things that others just, they don't even maybe notice sometimes, you know, they're just like, what? what's the big deal? Just let it go. And that's one of the common things we hear. Just, you know, just let it go. It's, it's not a big, it's not a big thing. It's done, you know, and we're still processing and processing. Um, and then the E would be for emotionality or emotional sensitivity. Sometimes it's emotional reactivity. Some people will look at, you know, some HPs and go, wow, that person is so emotional, but sometimes we get tired of, of that response. And so um, it, it's not serving us. So maybe we'll actually shut down. So sometimes we seem very reserved or national because the emotions are so intense that we just kind of keep them to ourselves and don't share them. But but we do feel really, really deeply. And then S is for um, sensing the subtle, which means, you know, again, we, we because our filters are so minimal, we just notice every little detail or, you know, we're, they call us like the canary in the coal mine kind of thing. You know, we're, we're aware of things before other people or things that others would never even notice. Uh, and sometimes that can be really helpful and sometimes that can be really challenging, but uh, it, it has to do with that sensing the subtle, which, you know, it, it allows us to be really connected with nature and beauty and things like that. Cause we notice all of these little subtleties. Uh, but, but those tend to be kind of the, the, the main characteristics of the trait. And usually people who are highly sensitive and don't aren't aware of the trait itself. I mean, they know they're highly sensitive. They always have been, but they they hear things like you're too sensitive, you're oversensitive, or you know, you just can't like let things go. You make such a big deal out of everything. Why is it, you know, why is it always such a, a, a big ordeal? Or um sometimes we tend to commit ourselves to things and then back out at the last minute because we'll get to the end of the day or get to the end of the week and we're just overwhelmed and it's just too much. And then we're like, eh, I need to bow out. And so sometimes people think that we're actually antisocial, um, but in reality, we are, we're very social, but on a one-to-one -one or small group kind of basis. And we really like that deep, deep connection. We're not really usually into too much you know, small talk and, and things like that. We really like that, that connection um, and that interaction. So that's kind of in a, in a nutshell, <laughs> um, the high sensitivity trait. Yeah. So do you find... Um... 
are a lot of HSPs uh, introverted as well? Well, interestingly, 30% of HSPs are actually extroverted. So um, th those folks can actually have a little bit more of a challenge in terms of being overwhelmed because they put themselves out there a lot more and then get to a point where like, oh, wait, that's too much. And then they get overwhelmed. Uh, and then there's actually a subset called high sensation seeking HSPs who are really putting themselves out, not so much the, the way an extrovert would, but like wanting to have all kinds of really new experiences and some really intense, um, you know, opportunities, tr travel and, you know, bungee jumping or whatever, the things that are just really, you know, high intensity. And yet they have these traits of, you know, of sensitivity. So again, they can get really overwhelmed or realize like, oh, wow, this is, this is kind of a lot. Um, so yeah, it's, 70% I mean the many of us are are introverted but not necessarily yeah, yeah. so so you said 20% of the the population um, are HSPs out of that 20% um, how many of them actually realize that they're HSPs <laughs> I, I I think a pretty small percentage uh, you know one of the things that has evolved over over my career is, you know, once I started coaching, um, recognizing that the majority of people that find me are highly sensitive, but I've also even discovered that some of those, they don't know it <laughs> at the time, but based on our interactions, I'll stop and say, so, you know, let me ask you a few questions and then I'll have them take an inventory. And then they're like, oh, oh, this makes, this makes so much sense, you know, and, and then they're aware. So I wasn't aware of it until maybe 12 years always know we're very sensitive and we hear hear that you know plenty from other people but um until you learn about it you know read about it see an inventory someone tells you and you go oh it's not just me that's the biggest thing is we feel really isolated and under misunderstood and like total outlier no one's gonna ever get me and then you find out oh wait 20 percent. i mean that's you know it's a it's a minority but 20 percent is you know that's quite a few few people in the world <laughs> So once you realize that, it's like, wow, I'm part of this tribe and I didn't even know. I just thought I was, you know, managing all this stuff on my own. So, yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, before we started recording, I said I, that I'm definitely an HSP and I'm trying to, you know, think back to when I actually started reading up on it and, um, you know, digging into it. I think I saw a documentary about it a few years ago and, um, you know, again, it was kind of like a light bulb um going off and, and understanding that, you know, that I'm not alone, but, you know, everything you just described is exactly me. Like, I don't, I'm not big into small talk. You know, when I do podcasts, I want to have conversations with people, real conversations. Um, you know, I, I was in a position um, in the community before Sandy and I started, um, you know, traveling full-time in an RV and I'd have to go to these networking events and stuff like that. And I absolutely hated it because everything there was all about small talk and all about, you know, everyone you met, they had some sort of agenda. They weren't really wanting to get to know you as a person. It was just, you know, get to know you to figure out what you could do for them. <laughs> um, and I, I absolutely- And at the time you've got 50 people doing that. And so the noise was just crazy and it was hard to focus on one person when six people are talking like two feet away from you. <laughs> I know I hated those too. <laughs> hated those things with a passion. So um, when to, you know, so you're an HSP as well. When, when did you start? Um, you, you said you broke up a little bit when you said when you actually first started realizing you were, you were an HSP and to follow up to that, once you, found out how did you really kind of you know turn that into a, a superpower so to speak yeah for me it was like you mentioned it was like that aha light bulb moment when i read the inventory because it i was having an issue with some friends and another friend that was supporting me said hey go online and check this out and of course then i looked at it and checked off all but two of 16 traits and i said wow this this is me and it's not just me. It's, it's all these other people because I'm going to create an inventory and put it on the internet, you know? So then I started searching and I, I probably, I don't know if the movie that you saw was um, Elaine Aaron's just, you know, sensitive, the untold story, which I recommend to everybody. Um, 
Was it? So, you know, I, I watched what I read. I read, pod, uh, read um, you know, interviews and articles and listened to to podcasts and to presentations and all kinds of different things and, and just really familiar, familiarized myself with all of the the points of the trait and, and reframed everything, you know, in my past up until that point and let go of, of a lot of judgment and, you know, guilt and, you know, stuff looking at like, oh, no, no wonder I did that or no wonder that happened that way. And, you know, so did a lot of reframing type type work. And um, I, I think just just by embracing it and honoring it and then working through, I mean, you know, as a coach and previously a counselor, I mean, I have a lot of self-care tools and a lot of, um, you know, self-awareness type exercises, tools. I mean, I used all of that to to help me, you know, manage that and move through on my journey is of understanding myself. <clears throat> and I think it was that mostly the, the, you know, self-acceptance and honoring, which is what I work with my clients so much on, because if you can really honor it and say, yeah, this is who I am as a highly sensitive person, not in spite of, and not feeling like you need to fix it and change to be like everyone else, you know? Um, so I think, I think that was the main thing was just really that honoring and then just learning everything I possibly could about it. And, you know, looking at different programs and books and things like that and saying, oh, okay, well, how can I use that? Not only for myself, but with my clients, because then I started, you know, recognizing that a lot of them were highly sensitive. And so I think just that embracing um, and no longer looking at it as something that, yes, different for 80% of the people, but not different. It was totally normal for the HSP realm, you know? Uh, so that, that was the biggest factor and that's what I work on you know with my clients is trying to get to that point of saying yeah let's let's honor and embrace that and then you can even get to the point where you can celebrate it you know and it's because it's it can be truly amazing uh, if you're not bogged down in the overwhelm um, so there's lots of tools for that and then being able to just go yeah this is me you know if you like it great if you don't well that's <laughs> that's okay that's the way we all are right there are people that that work for us and and people that don't and that's that's who I am so that's the way it is. Yeah. Love that. So at what point did you decide um, that you wanted to, um, to help others who have HS, you know, once you kind of got past that and, and what was the, the inspiration behind that wanting to, to help others, you know, understand it and again, turn it into their own superpower. Mm hmm yeah, for me, it was, you know, once I, I mean, I'd been working with a lot of highly sensitives and, and I'd known that I was, you know, myself and <clears throat> the combination of, of just really seeing the struggle that people were going through based on, you know, their sensitivities and especially in relationships and things like that. But then also I had, so, you know, several people that were working with me and they said, oh, you know, I've had counseling and coaching in the past. And I felt like I could only get so far and then it just wasn't working anymore because I didn't feel like I was really heard or really understood. I'd get to this point and people would be like, oh, well, yeah, just try this or do this one. And, and just stuff that wouldn't resonate. And they would just feel like, okay, well, I'm done with this person because I, I it, the, you know, it's not going anywhere. I can't, can't do that. So I realized that that was really a niche that was not being met, that there are a lot of highly sensitive out there that if they, if they aren't understood and, and it, hard for non-highly sensitives to get it, you know, to get us, um, that, that became, you know, kind of a driving force of, okay, you know, I'm going to actually not just, you know, encourage, you know, send the energy out to bring those folks in, but actually make that my, my focus point and, and actually seek out, um, you know, the highly sensitives or, or, or put that, that focus out there for, for folks to find me that way, because they're very, you know, receptive but also I, I get them and and that works so yeah yeah and so is is your practice now solely with hsps or you'll you'll work with others as well um i do work with others uh, it kind of depends i mean we always do a, a discovery call to see you know how how we manage. so i do work with people i'm a, i do i use tapping um so I don't know if people are familiar with tapping but so I'll, i work with a, a variety of people with that with a very specific focus, you know, money issues or or things like that. And we we'll just do that. They still tend to be end up being highly sensitive, but but some, you know, occasionally not. Or sometimes they're kind of like 
maybe in the in the middle, maybe they score like 14 out of 28 or whatever. And they're like, well, yeah, some of that fits, some of it doesn't. Um, and then the other piece is just, I, I really like helping, you know, decreasing overwhelm or stress or whatever term you want to use. So I do sometimes work with folks that they maybe aren't necessarily highly sensitive, but they're having specific issues of sensitivity, you know, in some area and they're very, very overwhelmed. So I, I do work with, with those folks as well. But um, in terms of like my, my general coaching focus, uh, especially for, you know, my, my whole you know, coaching program uh, tends to be, um, I mean, I won't say no, depending on, you know, what, what that interaction is like and what the focus is, but it does tend to be, you know, highly sensitive folks for sure. Gotcha. And mm -hmm. when, so by the time they they're seeking out your help, um, have they already identified as an HSP or are they coming to you and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, check the box, check the box. Yeah, that is me. All right. How do we, <laughs> how do we address it? It's, it's both. And it's like all levels because sometimes people, and I, I have changed my website recently. So now it's very clearly, you know, focused on HSPs, but but still people will find the website and then they'll sign up for a you know, or for a discovery call. And then I always ask, you know, or, do you think you're highly sensitive? And sometimes not necessarily, but, um, but I think, you know, most people will, will see that as, Oh, someone's going to understand me and then sign up knowing it's like, Oh, this is great. You know, highly sensitive, or they'll see it and go, Oh, well, that's not me, but I like what she has to say. And there's some kind of connection or resonance. And then there's the folks that they're drawn to me for whatever reason, they find my site and then they start reading everything on, wait a minute. <laughs> and maybe prior to getting on my site, they weren't aware of the trait, but then they start reading and they're going, oh my gosh, I didn't even know. I had no idea. Like I have a meetup group uh, and I get, I have new members every single week. And the majority of those, when they join my um, online, uh, like gathering, you know, community Zoom meeting, um, a lot of times they'll say, yeah, I, I just discovered this because I just started searching things like, you know, out of control emotions or, you know, whatever. And then somehow on the meetup thing and that one pops up and they're going, oh, what's this? Uh, so a lot of times it's it's people just discovering it. Um, maybe they have heard a little bit about it and something and then they start searching it and they find me, but it's really, really new. Uh, or, you know, they're like, yeah, well, that's probably not me, but but I, I seem to like her. So let me, let me connect. And then we talk more and they're like, oh, well, maybe I should take that inventory. And then they take it and they're like, okay, well, a lot of the stuff makes sense. Now, and yeah, I guess, I guess I'm highly sensitive. And a lot of times people are almost, well, they're either really validated and they're like, oh, this is so amazing because now I can put everything into perspective or there's folks that have maybe heard a little bit, or they have an assumption of what that means. And so they're like, oh, I don't, I don't want that. I don't want a label. I don't want, you know, so sometimes it's kind of just that educational piece of, you know, it's, it's, it's like being left-handed or right-handed, you know, you're highly sensitive or you're not highly sensitive. It's, there's no judgment on that. There's, it's not or bad, right or wrong. It just is. So if you acknowledge that and, and decide to work with it, just like if you were left-handed, you would be like, okay, well, I have my, you know, scissors on the outside of the table, I'm going to whatever, and then I can thrive and it's, it's all good. So same, same thing. So yeah, quite a mixture. Yeah. Um. So why, why do you think it's important to have conversations like this to, you know, bring awareness of, you know, HSPs, again, not just to other HSPs, but, you know, to the general population. Why do you think that's, this is an important conversation to have? Yeah. So everyone that I've ever talked to who's not highly sensitive, as soon as they listen to my explanation and whether it's for me personally, or, you know, ask that question, well, what is highly sensitive? And then I take the time to explain and they say, oh, I had no idea. Um, I always thought that it was people just being too sensitive because they just didn't, you know, didn't do what they needed to do to fix it or just were ridiculous or, you know, dr overly dramatic. And they just liked the, um, the response or the attention or whatever, but they, they tended to see it as a fault that someone, you know, needs to correct, take care of that, get back with me kind of thing. Right. So, so explaining it to them, helping them to understand 
again, this is just a trait. It's, it's a genetic thing with the way we're born. It's just we're, the way we're wired. So we're not choosing to be difficult. We're not choosing to be you know, different than everybody or antisocial or those things. Cause there's a lot of assumptions of just that term, highly sensitive. Uh, a lot of times, excuse me, people <clears throat> just think, oh, well, yeah. So that they're, they're kind of on edge and they, they need to do some work on themselves <laughs> and then they'll be all better. Uh, so I, I really like doing that educational piece because people just, they just don't know. I mean, you know what you know, right? So if you're, if you're not highly sensitive, then you approach the world in a certain way and that's normal. So those who are reacting to things more than than they do, then that seems like something that just you know it's out of the norm and yeah, work on that and you know it'll it'll be better. Um, and and the same thing. I mean, I, I work with my clients on that all the time. It's it's good to try to help other people understand how how we embrace life or approach life. But it's also important to understand that non highly sensitives see things in a certain way, and so if they don't get us and they react in a certain way, that's you know disrespectful to us or for some reason doesn't work for us it doesn't necessarily mean that they're being insensitive or rude or uncaring or whatever it's just the way they're made and they just don't notice things like or or don't have the same intention or and everything's not as important you know for them so recognizing those differences and then yeah help helping people to understand what those differences are and, and that it is inherent it's not just a choice of you know liking to be um, unreasonable or ridiculous. So, you know, about, you, you might've heard some of those terms in, in your life growing up maybe. Um, yeah. So that education piece is, is really big. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think the, uh, you know, the more people understand it, um, and, and again, I think it's, you know, just our society in general is, you know, we all need to be a little bit more empathetic of who we're dealing with and, and what we're dealing with and, and that sort of thing. So I think that's great to, um, you know, build this awareness and, and uh, you know, continue to, to talk about it for sure. Um, so mm -hmm. what, what are some of the resources um, that are out there for HSPs to, you know, again, apart from just reaching out to someone like you, um, what, what resources are out there available to help, you know, them educate themselves and, and really understand that again, it's not, you know, it's not a crutch. It's not, you know, they're not weird. It's, it's just who they are. So what, what would some of those resources be? Yeah. So on my website, I have a, a link to a, a quiz, uh, like a little inventory thing, which is really helpful. And then a few different, um, you know, free free resources. And then I always send people to Elaine Aaron's site, which is HS person, highly sensitive person, hsperson.com. And, she, you know, you can find research and all, I mean, she's been doing, working on this since the nineties. So there's old research, new research. She collaborates with other people. There's, there are links to um, a retreat in Colorado in September. Uh, there's blog posts and you know, and the inventory, she's got, you know, her inventory on there. There's one for children. Uh, yeah, aren't you can take one on behalf of your child, or if they're old enough, they can, you know, take one themselves. Uh, so there's just tons of information. And then she's got her own, I don't even know how many books she has now, six, seven. So you can get her books. Of course, you can get those on Amazon, but you can, you can see what those all are, you know, on her website. And then just, just searching, you know, high, highly sensitive people or something like that, all kinds of stuff is, is going to come up. There's more and more stuff out there all the time. There, There's a, a sensitive, might be just sensitive refuge, something like that. That's just, just blog articles, um, you know, maybe one per day or at least, you know, several a week at least. So I, I think it's really helpful to just read and listen, you know, as much as you possibly can on it so that it normalizes it. And then um, things like that movie, uh, I think is, is phenomenal, you know, just sensitive, the untold story. And then there's one on love and um, relationship, you know, type stuff. And it's it's really helpful to to see other, you know, listen to other people talking, see how that affects people across the board. So one of the, the traits of uh, sensitivity is that we tend to be more, a higher percentage are, um, 
in in the arts and you know performance and and things like that so a lot of um, musicians a lot of artists a lot of writers and poets and things like that there's a higher percentage of more than percent um in in those areas and so a lot of people that you you know follow um that are you know maybe a singer songwriter or something like that and then you find out that they're really struggling with things and you go oh, okay well let me dive a little deeper and you're like oh yeah they're probably highly sensitive and, and life is really challenging because they have all this inherent overwhelm with their schedules and all of the you know media and all that kind of stuff and really they're they're highly sensitive and they kind of want to cocoon sometimes and um so that movie is really great because alanis morissette for those who are familiar with her she's um, an integral part of that that movie. And so she talks about what that is like for her, you know, as an artist and a, a highly sensitive. And so no normalizing it in any way is, is really beneficial. So yeah, books and podcasts, and there's, there's actually a lot out there right now compared to, you know, 15, 20 years ago, there wasn't much at all. And then sharing it, you know, one of the best things I like to do is have people um, get an inventory and then share it with someone that they want to explain themselves to or, or share and just be understood by just say, hey, will you take this inventory? And then they'll look at it and go, okay, you know, let me take it, go, all right. Then you say, okay, well, I scored all but, you know, however many of these. And then they can have that comparison and a, a place to start in that conversation of this is what life's like for me. This is what it's like for you. They're different, but they're, it's just the way they are. And then once you can normalize all of that, it helps, you know, you to move along that journey to honoring it and embracing it and letting it be your superpower. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, uh, when you talk about Alanis Morissette in that movie, I mean, she, that was, it was really interesting to see like her reaction. And, you know, I think creatives in general, um, what did you say the percentage was again for, you know, for artists and, and musicians and creatives? In oh, general? I don't know exactly what the percentage is, but I know it's more than 20%, you know, I mean, 20% of the population is highly sensitive, but if you go to that realm, it's, it's definitely higher. Yeah. 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 And that, and that makes purpose, you know, perfect sense. Cause you know, creatives do think differently in just in general. <laughs> you know? So I think, you know, for, for an artist to, to look at something and be able to, you know, transform that from what he's looking at through his mind and then put it on canvas or, you know, into a song and lyrics and music. Um, it makes perfect sense that, um, a much higher percentage of creatives would be HSPs than, you know, the general population, so to, so to speak. Um, and they're, they're feeling and processing everything so deeply, you know, and you can tell because it comes out in their words or their paintings or, you know, whatever they're, they're producing um, be because they have that experience. And so the, one of the benefits of being highly sensitive is that we, experience that stuff at a deeper level so we are really generally really moved by our beauty we have a really deep connection with nature and like you know you go and you see like a little ladybug on a leaf and you're like oh look at that and other people are just walking by and like okay whatever <laughs> you know but you're like oh but it's so cool um you know you see an amazing sunset or you see and you, you, we can be brought to tears by by stuff that other people are not even noticing like what what's the big deal oh yeah that's nice okay and you're going no it's really nice <laughs> you know, so so we have these intense, I like to talk about it as being like in like a, a black and white or gray world or technicolor, you know, so if, uh, for HSPs, life is in technicolor. I mean, everything is amazing, you know, if we're not, again, bogged down in all of the, the overwhelm. So being able to embrace that and just say, okay, you know, life is big, amazing, and I'm going to embrace that because I can. Yeah, yeah, I think we experience highs at a much higher level and lows at a much lower level. And there's just, you know, we're er, the general population can be, you know, here in the middle, like we're just kind of constantly, you know, these highs and, and lows and we just, you know, which again is, is both a blessing and a curse, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. And if you're not aware of the trait, that can be kind of crazy making, right. Where you're like, what is wrong with me <laughs> that I, you know, I can't moderate my emotions. I mean, that's one of the big, big things for us to figure out is how do we moderate our emotions because they can get so big. And then you'll, I, I mean, even when you're in the low, they're still, they're still big, right? It's just like, it's really intense. I'm really sad. I'm really, this is really, especially the, like the state of the world kind of stuff or the planet, 
you know, things that we don't have any control over can be really overwhelming for us because we don't have that control. And it's, you know, it, uh, it just impacts our hearts much because we, we feel that and it, it it's important. Everything makes, makes so much. Um, yeah. It's just, it, it's, it has so much import and it, it's, it's hard to let it go because it's so intense and other yeah. people that aren't highly sensitive, they're like, yeah, well, you know, well, what can you do? Right. That's the point. <laughs> I can't, I can't really do anything. I mean, I can do my part. And so being able to moderate that and, you know, manage those emotions is, is key. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anything else you want to, uh, want to cover that we didn't cover, um, before I get to my final question? Um, well, just to talk a little bit more about that idea of making it, um, something that we honor, and it, it can be our superpower, and but it can't really be until we we have that that place of honoring and saying, "This is who I am as a highly sensitive person." You can say, you know, outside of it doesn't have to be that you focus on that. I mean, that's just oh, that's who I am. I'm not going to say, "Oh, I'm a great person because I'm left-handed." You know, it's not. I'm like this major special person because I'm highly sensitive, but I have some really special things about me because I'm highly sensitive. And if I honor that, um, all of the experiences that I have are are good and and I have value to give the world then I can move forward that way and the world does need m more compassion and you know we have a higher intuition usually and so if we act on that that's what the world needs and we see things from all sides and take into consideration of everything before we make a decision so sometimes it takes longer to make a decision but it, it's very thorough uh, we tend to be very diplomatic artistic you know, all of these things, we see the the details that other people miss. So that's really good. And let's like, say a work environment or completing your project or whatever, because you can say, okay, well, what about this? What about that? And other people are like, well, why worry about that? Well, it, you know, it could impact the, the final result. So we take you know, all of that into consideration. So all of those things are really powerful. And if we embrace that and, and say, okay, I'm going to I'm going to present myself to the world and, you know, here I am and I have all of these amazing characteristics that are part of my <clears throat> sensitivity and then really make it you know, your superpower. And instead of staying back here and be like, okay, well, I'm so different and nobody understands me, just make my way quietly, you know, through the world and not make that impact that you really could uh, if you embrace that. So that's, that's a big piece for me. Yeah. No, I, I love that. I love that. So, um, Tammy, how do people get a hold of you? Um, where can they find you? What's the website address? Um, and uh, you know, just how can they how can they track Tammy down if they're if they're looking to find out more about HSP? Yeah, so my website is just coachtammygoen.com, which is M M Y G O E N. And then I've got the inventory on there. I've got you know my blogs. You can read and all kinds of different um, things about you know HSP. You can read my story, that kind of thing. And then I also have a link tree um, profile. So I've got, you know, it's really easy. I mean, you, you can do it off my website too, but, you know, for my LinkedIn and, you know, all the social media type stuff. And then I do have the meetup group, uh, which is for Central Oregon. But now when, you know, since the pandemic hit, that became a just a virtual thing. And I have people from all over the world um, that join that. So that's available for, <clears throat> for anybody. So those are all um, ac accessible either through my website or link tree. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, so as you know, the subtitle of the podcast is Many Little People in Many Little Places, which comes from the opening lyrics of a Michael Fronte song, Gloria, which go, when many little people in many little places do many little things and the whole world changes. So it's one of the little things that Tammy does to make the world a little bit better place. Uh, I try to make people smile every day. And one of the things I have actually um, that I print out, I make like little business card size things that just say you matter with a little heart on it. And I like to just hand those out randomly. So when I'm in town or walk, walk by someone and say, here, have a great day. And just give them a little, little bit of happiness. And it usually brings a smile. And so that raises the vibration and, you know, of course makes me feel good and makes them feel good. And so that's one of the little things that, that I like to do. I, I love that. I love that. And I think that uh, that can go such a long way is uh, just being able to make other people smile. It, it does raise a vibration and I think uh, helps everybody out in the long run. So 
I love that. And that's an answer I get quite often. So um, hopefully we're, we're all collectively raising the vibration because we definitely need to raise it in today's world right now. And, and being thankful when somebody actually holds a door for you, which doesn't happen as much anymore these days, but you know, it, do something just little, just making a really point to say, oh, thank you so much. That was really great. Instead of just ignoring it or nodding or something. Um, so both sides of that, I think are really, really key. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Jamie, I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, this is a great conversation. Um, and for folks out there listening, be sure to check out my other podcasts and blogs at journeymymotherson.com or danclauser.com. Head on over to Amazon, pick up a copy of the latest book, Journey My Mother's Son. And again, Tammy, thank you so much for the conversation. I really enjoyed this. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for having me. You bet.